salute to a fallen colleague after more deadly violence in our area. This time, just outside the Pentagon, several people injured, two dead. 7 News team coverage continues tracking the investigation and new at this hour, the questions officials won't answer. And we begin with that breaking news outside the Pentagon where 7 News is tracking scenes of chaos, mourning, and a search for answers tonight. And within just the past 15 minutes, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency did acknowledge that one of its officers was killed today in the line of duty. 7 News has also confirmed that the man police say attacked that officer with a knife was also killed. Now we have live team coverage tonight covering all the angles of this. 7 News' Victoria Sanchez leads our coverage right near where it all started the Metro bus bay at the Pentagon. Victoria. This happened at 1037 this morning and lasted for hours. When we got here, there were witnesses sitting on the ground as officers were asking them what happened. One woman, a Metro employee, was visibly shaken after she witnessed the attack. Now this happened at the bus transit area near the rail and bus lines here at the Pentagon. A very popular stop for people who work inside the Pentagon and people traveling through this area of Arlington. We do know that one officer was killed in this altercation. The chief a few hours ago actually said that this happened at the bus area. Multiple shots were fired, but we are hearing that the officer was stabbed. That is what led to this officer's death. Right now, the area is clear. It is open. However, the bus involved in this incident and the area at the Pentagon still roped off with police tape as investigators try to figure out why this happened. Live in front of the Pentagon, Victoria Sanchez, 7 News. Victoria, thank you. And now to these very somber moments. You can see the officers paying their respects with a salute. This stretch from George Washington University Hospital all the way to the D.C. Medical Examiner's Office as hundreds of police officers were gathering to mourn one of their own. 7 News D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford continues our coverage now. Think about it, he'd probably come to work on a Tuesday as he had so many times before. But before the day was over, a procession of his fellow officers were escorting his remains to the medical examiner's office. After the officer's fatal encounter outside the Pentagon, he was rushed to George Washington University Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Officers from various departments, MPD, Park, the victim's own Pentagon Force Investigation Agency took that solemn trip from the hospital in Northwest to the forensics lab here in Southeast. And for many of those escorting officers, certainly in their minds, the idea that under similar circumstances, it could have been one of them. Reporting from Southwest Washington, Sam Ford, 7 News. And Virginia Senator Mark Warner, who is the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, shared his condolences online. This was a tweet he put out this afternoon calling this a senseless act of violence. He continued that his heart goes out to the officer's family, friends, and the Pentagon police force. 7 News I-Team investigator Scott Taylor joins us now, all new at 6 tonight. Scott, hours after that attack, Pentagon officials, they released nearly no information. Scott, has the Pentagon responded to your pressing questions on this? Well, it's been difficult getting a response from Pentagon officials all day. They just answered one of our questions, just one, and that came on Twitter. afternoon press conference more than four hours after the attack. The chief of the Pentagon's Force Protection Agency didn't provide a lot of details. And you can't confirm the depths of the officer or of the assailant? Ma'am, I can't compromise the, the ongoing investigation right now. The chief used that same statement to answer questions over and over again. I'm not confirming or denying those particular reports right now. The investigation is ongoing. So at this time, uh, I, I, I do respect that. As I said, this is an ongoing investigation. The 7 News I team reached out to Pentagon officials with just six basic questions, including what exactly happened. None of our questions were answered. I completely respect your question. I understand the interest, and uh, it is an ongoing investigation. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do pledge that we will provide the information as soon as possible. I do want to mention again, just before 6 p.m., more than seven hours after the attack, Pentagon officials tweeted out confirmation that one of their officers was killed during 
the incident this morning. Scott Taylor, 7 News. As for the agency itself, 7 News on your side did some research and found it dates back 19 years to the days after 9-11 and the anthrax attacks. The department has more than 700 sworn officers and covers all Department of Defense facilities in the capital region. You know, this is the second time that an officer from that department has been killed in the line of duty. Officer James Feltis died in 2005, one month after a man trying to get away from police after a carjacking crashed into him. The man driving that car was shot but did survive. And today is also the first time that officers with that department have used deadly force since 2010. That's when a gunman opened fire at the Pentagon security checkpoint right near the bus bays. But in that case, two officers were grazed before three officers shot and killed the gunman. It was later found that the man had mental illness issues and a longtime grudge against the government. Of course, the 7 News team will be working through the night and the days ahead to unravel what happened outside the Pentagon. We've been coordinating with our colleagues at ABC News who also want answers. World News Tonight breaks down the newest information they're learning ahead at 630.